It's a heavy assault cruiser, it's Minmata Republic, and it uses missiles. Please, tell me what is there not to love about the Munin? This is such a cool ship. I've mentioned before that I really like the visual aesthetic of the Rupture, the way that it actually looks like a space galleon with a full-on foxel, poop deck, etc. at the back. Stop laughing at the word poop deck, it is a genuine thing. Look it up. Um, and it just, the, even the way that the cannons and that come out the side with actual port hatches is just fantastic. I love it. So the Munin does that all and has what looks like a gigantic railgun on the front. Sign me the hell up. So I wanted to see, following my little plan recently of trying to get every heavy assault cruiser to be able to complete all of the different C3 ratting sites, the Munin was going to be next on the list. Stick around to find out how I did. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. And look at this brute on screen now. It's literally like someone took the Rupture, which I already love the visual design of, and just made it even better. They literally took a Rupture and looks like they just rammed a ray gun into the front of it. It's obviously not a rail gun. I'm not actually certain what it is supposed to be, but it looks badass. And I, I'm sorry, this is one of those few ships that I respect everyone's opinions. But if you think the Munin doesn't look badass, you're just wrong. There's, there's no opinion on that. That's fact. Scientifically proven by men with clipboards and white coats and everything. Promise you that. Anyway, look at it. You've even got this wonderful bit at the end here. This is referred to as the foxhole, and you've got the poop deck here on top. It's the bit where you normally have the helm and the captain stands. And I know swab the poop deck. It sounds amazing and hilarious because it's got the word poop in it. Who doesn't love the word poop? But there we go. I'm just saying it a lot now because I can. Again, hatches on the side, open and close. Beautiful, beautiful ship. But we're not here to talk about the aesthetics. No, I am continuing my challenge of trying to take each of the heavy assault cruisers through all of the different C3 combat sites. One fit, one ship, can it do all four combat sites? Munin, next on the list, that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. And if you do enjoy this video, if you just liked listening to me say poop straight for 30 seconds a minute ago, hit like, drop a comment down below on what you think about this. If you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel and keep me making content like this where I say poop a lot, then you can head to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Redbubble merchandise store. And if you fancy a little bit of help from me, again, ask questions in the comment section down below. Come join the Catskull Discord, which is linked in the description down below, and Catskull itself is always hiring as a corporation, always looking for new people to come out and join us in JSpace. You might even feature in a video. How cool would that be, right? Um, and essentially, as well, if you do want to get yourself one million free skill points, there's a referral link down there you can click to as well. You click it, you sign into your account, one million free skill points for literally doing that. I get a nice little kickback for that as well, but it helps you if you've not used a referral link before. Just get a little bit further ahead with your time in EVE Online. Anyway, all of that said and done then, I'm really excited about this one. Let's jump right in to talking about the Minmata Republic's Munin Heavy Assault Cruiser. Yeah, I know I'm being an excitable little Sasquatch today about this one, but quite frankly, who doesn't love a really cool looking ship that does really cool amounts of damage and is named after one of Odin's ravens for crying out loud, Hugin and Munin. That's just so cool. It's a really cool ship. It looks awesome. It has a great name. It does incredible things. I love this ship to pieces. So let's talk about what makes it tick. First of all, being a heavy assault cruiser, we are getting bonuses from the heavy assault cruiser skill and the racial cruiser skill, of course, in this case, the Minmatar cruiser skill. We also get a roll bonus because it's heavy assault cruiser, which allows us to fit assault damage controls. We're going to talk about these very briefly. Essentially, an assault damage control is a module that when it is fitted to your ship, gives you a passive increase to your hull, armor, and shield resistances. Not as much as a standard damage control would do, but it does increase all three of those resistances. These can also only be fitted to assault frigates and heavy assault cruisers. Therefore, when I'm flying either of those, I tend to fit one just because, oh, I can, you know? Essentially, though, why would you fit this if it's not as good as a standard damage control unit? Well, no, when it's passive, it isn't, but it can be activated. You can tap this thing active, and for the next 8 to 9 seconds, 8.78 seconds here, you have your resistances shoved right the way up. Mad amounts of resistances for 9 seconds before it goes on a 150 second cooldown. Long cooldown, basically a panic button. Oh no, I'm taking too much damage hit the assault damage control, and oh no, you're not really taking any damage anymore. And stick around for the fit section, you will see how that affects it later on. 
Mimitar cruiser, you are going to need to have all the way up to five in order to even undock this ship. Therefore, you're going to have a 25% bonus to light missile, heavy missile, and heavy assault missile damage. 25% additional damage. Yay, we like this. 3% bonus to all shield and armor resistances. That's 15% at the full training. Again, more shield and armor resistances. You can shield tank the Munin. You can armor tank the Munin. Versatility. Another little feather in the cap of the Munin. A raven feather, if you like. The other skill though, Heavy Assault Cruisers, this gives us a bonus to Heavy Missile and Heavy Assault Missile Explosion Velocity, therefore tightening the explosion and increasing damage application on smaller ships. And we also get a 5% bonus to Light Missile, Heavy Missile and Heavy Assault Missile um, Launcher Rate of Fire. That means faster firing. You'll notice that the explosion velocity doesn't apply to light missiles, so if you're using rapid light missile launches, they don't get an explosion velocity bonus, but then again, they don't really need one. The advantage of this, though, is that it means that heavy missiles and heavy assault missiles apply almost as well as the rapid lights do. So you don't need to really think, oh, do I need rapid lights? No, you can just go with the standard missiles and they will apply really, really well. It's also worth noting that the survivability skill, the bonus to shield and armor resistances, is found on Mimitar Cruiser, which you're going to have maxed. Therefore, this isn't so skill intensive. If you're sitting at Heavy Assault Cruiser 4, the Munin will be just as survivable as it would be at Heavy Assault Cruiser 5. I do recommend getting it to 5. I've recently got it to 5, hence I've been doing this little series of videos. But ultimately, getting it to 4 is going to be enough to give a nice hefty punch to this, and it's going to help clear those sites well. Getting it to 5, however, means you just clear those sites a little bit faster. Faster clearing sites, more ISK per hour, and who doesn't like more ISK per hour? Now that brings us to the fit itself. Now again, this will be in the description of this video. You can copy paste it into the game to see how your skills will affect it, into Pyfer, into wherever you want to. Save it in a notepad document just for quick reference for all I care. Really doesn't bother me. But it's there so that you can copy paste it where, wherever you want for whatever you want to do with it. It is worth noting again that this is designed for one ship, one uh, fit to do all three of the C3 combat sites. Therefore, if you are only going to be running Fortification Frontier Strongholds or only going to be running the Aruz Construct, yeah, you can probably tweak this fit to do it slightly better. This is just designed to do all four things. If you do tweak the fit, let me know. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below how you get on with this, what you do to change it, um, if it's just an overall change to do all four sites, or if you want to do individual changes for individual sites. I just couldn't be bothered with the whole faff of going back and redocking and changing fit or using a mobile depot. I just wanted one fit that would do everything and this does high slots then to start with heavy assault missile launches am i that predictable of course i am i love my hams i don't like ham as a meat but i do like ham as a weapon this is one slight issue that we do have with this it's worth noting is you are going to need heavy assault missile launcher twos because the maximum flight range on the rages here you can see it's only 16 kilometers every time we come up against an awakened upholder those little bastards like to orbit at 30 kilometers and web you so you're not going to be able to get too close to them therefore i I like to make sure I have an option with my weaponry to go beyond 30 kilometers, and we certainly can do that with the Tech 2 Javelins. You can't do that with standard Kaldari Navy heavy assault missiles, though. It only hits about 28 kilometers, which is not sufficient. You are going to need to have heavy assault missile launcher twos so that we can have Javelins. And if we're going to be forced to use Javelins against the Upholders, then you know what? We may as well have Rages for everything else, because 761 DPS is is just beefy. Gotta love that number. Anything over 700 just makes me all a little bit warm and fuzzy inside. Um, again, whichever type of uh, heavy assault missile you want to use is up to you. By which I mean, do you use Nova, Inferno, Mjolnir, or Scourge? Any. There is no specific bonus. This is not a Kaldari ship. We can use whatever missile uh, damage type we like. I've gone for Nova because, well, it's explosive damage and that's Minmatar, right? Wrong, I just went for these because they were literally all I had on hand at the time, and they work. They work just as fine because sleepers have omni resistances. Now, because of this range issue as well, we do have a Missile Guidance Computer 2 fitted with a Missile Range script. This means you are going to be swapping between a Missile Range script and a, uh, a Precision script, depending on what you're shooting at. If you're going to be shooting at something that's a little bit further away, you swap to the Range script so you can actually hit them. If you're going after the Frigates, you can go for Rage, and then just swap to the Guidance, the Precision script. And suddenly those Rage missiles, thanks to the uh, Munin's bonuses, are going to be applying really, 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 really well and killing everything everything around you, which is what you want in a combat site, right? 
The rest of the mid slots then, we have a 10 mega newton afterburner for propulsion, allows us to move around the site quite nicely. Um, it's not a particularly fast ship if we simulate. You'll see we're sitting at 700 meters per second. It's not the slowest, it is a min matar ship, so it does move at a decent pace. Um, you can bling this if you really want. For me, that's more than enough. We then have some uh, capacitor stability here, Republic Fleet large capacitor battery and a Thucker small cap battery. Now you can theoretically go for two mediums and you can do Republic Fleet or Thucker whichever way around you like. I consider them interchangeable. One of them has a bigger bonus. The other one has higher resistances to neutralization. They kind of work out the same. This is just to get as much capacitor stability in there as possible. Could even go for a cap recharger instead of the small cap battery. That does kind of do the job as well. I just, again, had a Thucker small cap battery lying around from when I lost a wolf a couple of weeks ago and I haven't refit it. So I, you know, shoved that in there because it fit within. Works really nicely is what I'm trying to get at here. Looks weird to use an undersized battery, but it works. I can't get too, I can't get a large and a medium with all of this power grid and that in there. It just doesn't cram in. We are going to be armor tanking this. Therefore, first things first, assault damage control two. And I've said we'll showcase how this is and isn't when it's active. Look at the armor resistances. We are pretty low on kinetic at 51. But we've got a whopping 94 electromagnetic. And then, boom, let's turn on the assault damage control. 99% electromagnetic. Oh no, those sleepers with their big lasers, they do nothing. They do nothing. And we get 87% on the kinetic damage with 90 on the explosive. It means you're going to tank slightly more from the sleeper's missiles than you will from their turrets. But for a few brief seconds, nine seconds of activation time, you're taking practically no damage at all. And what little damage you do take gets repaired up with Corpum C-type medium armor repairers. May as well go all the way up to Corpum here. They're fairly cheap on the market. Um, 455 HP every 9.6 seconds, 89.6 seconds with both of those running. We are cap stable with both running. Of course, we can run just one if we need just one. Um, keep an eye. If one of them is repairing enough, then turn the second one off and keep your capacitor nice and high. If you start taking a bit more damage, uh, add the second armor repairer. If you start taking a boatload of damage, that's when you pop the assault damage control. Final thing then for tank is the reactive armor hardener. Essentially what this does is it looks at the damage you are taking and from what damage type. And then each cycle, each 10 second cycle of that reactive armor hardener, it sits there and goes, oh right, you were taking a load from kinetic, you were taking a load from kinetic, you were taking a load from kinetic, not much on anything else. Cool. Then at the end of that cycle time, it adjusts. It looks at what you're not taking damage. So you're taking a load of kinetic, but very little from uh, electromagnetic. So it'll drop the electromagnetic a bit and pull the uh, kinetic up. And it'll keep doing that until it gets into itself into a nice comfortable position where it feels that it has you know, maximized the amount of resistance that you can take. Really powerful tool, especially up against sleepers where they've got two different weapon types, one that does electromagnetic and thermal, one that does kinetic and explosive. You want good omni resists. That will help you achieve that really, really well. Final two low slots then are not tank, two ballistic control system twos. Up that damage, get it really nice and high so that we kill everything quickly. For our rigs then, we have a medium explosive armor reinforcer that helped pull the armor here right up. You'll see that if I were to pop that off, that would drop even lower than the kinetic. Um, it is the explosive that I want higher here in this case. If you have a, a kinetic lying around, go for it, but explosive is the better one to go for. And then a medium bay loading accelerator too. Again, just to pick up that DPS and make sure we're punching everything as hard as possible. We do have 25 megabits per second of drone bandwidth. That means we can fit a flight of five light drones in here. I tend to just go for whatever is lying around. Often hobgoblins because they've got good damage application, but equally as often warriors or um, whatever the Caldari ones are called. My brain's completely gone. But either way, whichever drones you want to use, go for them. It really doesn't matter all that much. Obviously, the Mimitar ones are faster, but they've got lower damage. The Galente ones have the highest damage, but they tend to not apply it quite as well. But they're light drones, so who cares? You're getting 83.5 DPS out of it. Like, seriously, don't stress it. It's not a big problem. Anyway, that is the fit. Let's talk about it in all four of the different C4 sites, shall we? C3 sites, C3 sites, C3, I promised C3. Not C4, C3 sites. Let's start then with the Fortification Frontier Stronghold. Oh yes, you guys know this one very, very well. Munin has no issues with this site whatsoever. It is very simple, very straightforward. If you're familiar with Fortification Frontier Strongholds, skip ahead to the next part of the video because you know what's going on. If not, however, Wave 1, you've got two Emergent Defender Frigates. These have webs and aggro drones quite nastily, and two Awakened Defenders. These are cruisers that do very, very little other than DPS. They like to orbit at 15Ks. 
Now, the Awakened Defenders are the triggers for Wave 2, so we're going to ignore those and go after the Emergent Defenders, which works quite nicely because they die very quickly. The webs mean that they just really hate your drones as well, so do be aware that when you launch your drones, um, you are going to have to keep an eye on drone aggro, maybe bring those back. Fortunately, the bonuses that the Munin has means these Emergent Defenders actually go down fairly quickly. Not as quickly as perhaps some of the other ships can take them, but they do go down not at a slow pace. Um, ultimately, your first part of Wave 1 is just going to be getting your traversal up, starting moving in any direction. Believe me, everything is going to come to you in this wave. Um, so try and stay close-ish to the uh, central object in here, that big ring, because that's where everything else is going to spawn. Drop your mobile tractor unit, bookmark the MTU because you're not an idiot and everyone should do that. So you can walk back to it if you have to warp off and if you've got friends who are going to be doing salvaging then they can come in when you're done. Warp to where the MTU was and just salvage everything. It's a good habit to get into. Just do it. Seriously, just do it. Anyway, kill those two emergent defenders. Then we come on to the two awakened defenders. They're going to orbit at 15Ks. Not a problem for us whatsoever. We can kill them nice and easily. This will then move us into Wave 2. Wave 2 has two more Awakened Defenders, standard cruisers that do nothing, and two Awakened Upholders. Awakened Upholders are absolute gits. These things like to orbit at 30 kilometers. They hit you with webs and with newts. Those newts are six gigajoules per second each, so you're gonna be getting hit with 12 gigajoules per second of neutralization. That does sting quite a bit, and the webs slow you down, which is a problem when you're in a fairly slow-ish moving ship anyway way. With both of those on you, you're going to struggle to get close to either of those awakened upholders. This is why we have the tracking computer, uh, the guidance computer, sorry, with the range script in it. This gets us the range required to be able to deal with those different await, those two awakened upholders. That said, the awakened upholders are, of course, the triggers for wave three, so we can't kill both of them. Kill one of them, so you're halving the webification effect on you. Not really, because of how webs work, but you're getting one of the webs off you, and you're halving the neutralization. That is absolutely vital. It's very quick and easy to do. They don't have much HP. They die quickly. Take down one of the awakened upholders, then go after both of the awakened defenders. Once those are dead, you go back for the second awakened upholder and trigger into wave three. Now, wave three is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. You do have another awakened upholder, and since you're already going to be basically running the fit and everything that you need to take out an awakened upholder, and they're annoying, what with their whole thing of webs and uh, webs and the neutralization, you kind of want to take them out as quickly as possible. So you take out that first Awakened Upholder, then we go after the new ship in this wave, the Awakened Preserver. It's a cruiser with a remote rep. It is going to be a problem for us because anything else we shoot at is going to be getting repped by it. Therefore, you're kind of going to be doing two steps forward, one step back the entire time. While you're doing all of this, though, be aware there is a battleship in this wave, a Sleepless Upholder that is going to be neutralizing you. Now, without the Awakened Upholder, holder on the grid, that neutralization from the battleship shouldn't be a major threat to your capacitor at all. You should still be able to remain cap stable, but you've got to get rid of that awakened up holder as quickly as possible. Keep your traversal up against that battleship. If you are flying straight towards it or straight away from it, or if you're just parked like an idiot, it is going to do mad amounts of damage to you. You may need to use something like the assault damage control unit just to reduce incoming damage whilst you get your traversal up against that battleship. Spiral inwards and try to get yourself to a point where you're in a 5,000 meter orbit around it. At that point, the battleship can't hit you. Take out the Awakened Upholder, followed by the Awakened Preserver. I then go for the battleship next because it's got that neutralizer on it. And I'd rather not have a new on me, even if I can largely ignore it. Some people do go for the cruisers just because it's, you know, quick and easy kills. I prefer to take the battleship out first, then the two cruisers, thus ending the site nice and straightforward. Next up then, let's talk about the Outpost Frontier Stronghold. This is everyone's nightmare C3 anomaly. And actually the Munin does this remarkably well. You'll see that I've actually warped into this one at zero and I've done it with none of my shields available. Just get the damage control unit up and active as quickly as possible. Get traversal up against those three Argos turrets and then we're gonna take those turrets out one by one. Those are your priority, those Argos turrets. Make sure that you are keeping your traversal up. 
that damage control unit being active just before you drop out of warp is really helpful because it, they are going to lock you very quickly. They're going to hit you for a lot of damage straight off the bat. Get that traversal up and start shooting those. The drones should be okay here. Um, there's very little that's going to target your drones, so you can just kind of do whatever you need to do. They're only obviously, you know, small drones, but hey, DPS is DPS, right? Keep that traversal up and then keep an eye on where the sleepless defender is because keeping your traversal up against the Argos turrets is only half the battle. If you find yourself keeping the traversal up against those nicely, but the sleepless defender is directly in front of you or behind you and thus you have zero angular velocity against it, that is going to really hit quite hard. This is why the Outpost Frontier is considered arguably one of the trickier sites because it does rely a little bit on player skill when it comes to manually piloting. If you're watching the footage here, you can see that I'm kind of moving to keep those Argos alongside me whilst keeping that Sleepless Defender alongside me as well. And you'll manually pilot in sort of a spiral fashion to make sure that the, uh, the Argos and the Sleepless Defender are essentially always directly to your left or to your right. Never in front, never behind, because that way you keep your Traversal up nice and high, and they do very little damage to you. If you manage to get the Argos turrets down, of course you go after the Sleepless Defender next. It does have a web, so do be aware that there are going to be points where that does web you and slow you right the hell down, which means that those turrets in Battleship hurt even more because they're able to get good strong hits on you. But if you get the three turrets down, it's then straight onto the Sleepless Defender. Try and spiral in to get a nice tight orbit against it and you'll find that it doesn't even hit you, but quite frankly, as long as you're keeping the traversal up at all, you should be fine by the time you've got the three turrets down. Wave 2 then, once the battleship goes down, is probably the easiest wave of any of the C3 combat sites, certainly for the Munin. You have four cruisers, awakened defenders. They orbit you at 15 kilometers, so we don't have to worry too much about range issues here with the Munin. You just hit them. There's four of them. They are DPS only. They have no special effects. They're all the same, and killing the fourth one is the trigger. It is definitely the easiest and most simplistic wave in any of the C3 combat sites. Just literally shoot the cruisers. Once they're dead, wave three is going to spawn, and this is where things get a little bit hectic for most ships. Essentially, you're looking at two battleships, Sleepless Defenders, both armed with webs and incredibly powerful turrets that have not the greatest tracking. So if you can get your traversal up and keep your speed high, you're going to find that they struggle to hit you. The difficulty is they've both got webs, as do the four freaking frigates that spawn in this wave. Emergent Defenders, all armed with webifiers. Yeah, that stings, that hurts, and it is something you're going to need to handle very quickly when Wave 3 spawns. Get your traversal up against both battleships as quickly as possible, even if essentially you're actually gaining distance between them. It doesn't matter. Keep that traversal up, because with six webs on you, any hits that those ships land are really going to hurt. You do have the uh, the assault damage control unit if you need it. You can obviously overheat your armor repairers if you need that. But honestly, I haven't had to uh, haven't had to overheat anything in a long time running one of these sites. The Munin does surprisingly well against that final wave. It tanks it fairly comfortably with the uh, twin reps. You don't really have to worry too much about it as long as you're not flying it like an absolute idiot and you're keeping your traversal up. Keep the traversal up, kill the four frigates, at which point the lack of four additional webs on you does pick your speed up quite nicely. Start to close the gap on one of those uh, one of those battleships, of course making sure that you're not flying in a straight line towards it because that will get you wrecked. You're going to need to come in at a slight angle and slowly tighten and tighten inwards um, until eventually you are orbiting hopefully at about 5,000 meters around, around that battleship. At this point, one of those battleships is going to be missing you. The other one's going to be hitting you from time to time. It should be very easy to handle at that point. Punch that uh, Sleepless Defender in the face until it dies, then just take out the second one. Really quite simple. Once the frigates are down and once you're orbiting the first battleship, things are pretty straightforward then. It's just getting to that point that makes the Outpost Frontier that little bit scarier. That said though, Outpost Frontiers also have the highest ISK to HP ratio for the enemies. Therefore, if you can comfortably find yourself running these sites, they are very good ISK per hour, arguably the best of the C3 combat sites. So while your friends are all running Fortification Frontiers and being scared of the outposts, you can run the outposts like a boss.
The solar cell is also a fairly straightforward anomaly for the Munin to run. It doesn't have much of a problem with this anomaly, it just takes a little bit longer than some of the others because of the spawn distances and the short range of the Munin. So do bear that in mind, this is probably one of the less profitable sites for the Munin to run, but it can run it. So let's talk about anything you'll need to know here. So the first wave in a solar cell is guaranteed to be an awakened upholder, those absolute bastard cruisers that like to orbit at 30 kilometers and hit you with webs and newts. If you've been C3 ratting before, you'll know these are like the worst ships that you get at all. They're just annoying, and they're basically why we have to make sure we have at least a 30 kilometer range on any weaponry we use. Basically, you can actually approach these directly. They do so little damage on their own, and the Munin has decent enough tank. You can just approach that awakened upholder directly and punch it in the face with every missile that you have until it explodes. Like genuinely, get that awakened upholder down as quickly as possible because the web and the newt are going to be problematic for you if left around for too long. The other guaranteed ship that you have in this first wave is an Emergent Preserver Frigate. This is a frigate that has a scram, a web and a newt. So again, the web and the new aren't ideal, but they're only frigates, so we don't have to worry about it too much. And the Emergent Preserver is the trigger for Wave 2, so we need to take out that Awakened Upholder first and foremost, then go after the Emergent Preserver. That is, of course, unless we get the rare spawn on one of these sites, which is a battleship, a Sleepless Defender. This has a web um, only on it, so again, it's still not as vital to take out as the Awakened Upholder. If you do have the battleship spawn as well, you take out the Awakened Upholder first of all, then you go after the Sleepless Defender, then the Emergent Preserver. If you find that someone appears on D-Scan and you need to warp out quickly, you can kill that Emergent Preserver to get rid of the Scram to allow you to warp off. It will die quite quickly. Be aware that that will spawn Wave 2 early, and therefore you may have to just abandon the site and not come back, because there will be a lot of ships waiting for you. Wave 2, however, what we have here is another Awakened Upholder. Kill this first. It's not a trigger, it's an annoying Awakened Upholder. Lock it, approach it, blap it. Simple as that. With that down, however, we have three Awakened Defender Cruisers, straight up DPS cruisers that don't really do all that much, followed by two Emergent Defender Frigates which have webs. These can be slightly annoying, but they are only webs and two Emergent Upholder Frigates. These have remote repairers and newts. They're also the blasted trigger, which means we can't kill both of them. With the Awakened Upholder dead, I like to take out one of the Emergent Upholder Frigates nice and quickly. Half the amount of remote repping going on in this wave and get rid of one of those newts again. Just really helps things go a little bit smoother. So take out the Awakened Upholder and then one of the Emergent Upholders. Do not kill both of them. Killing both the Emergent Upholders early will get you killed because wave 3 will spawn in with a ton of ships still left from wave 2. Not a fun time. With the first, with the Awakened Upholder and the first Emergent Upholder down, I tend to go for the Frigates first, the Emergent Defenders. They're quick to kill, they don't have much HP, and they do have webs, which are slowing you down and increasing the amount of damage you take. So get those off grid nice and quickly, then go after the Awakened Defender Cruisers, because quite frankly they don't really do all that much, then take out that second Awakened Upholder. That's the way you do this wave. Do get that order memorized or written down somewhere near you so that you don't screw it up because it's seriously triggering the wave three early. There's a lot of ships in this wave and it's very quick and easy to accidentally kill that second emergent upholder and just be in a situation where you've got way too many ships on the battlefield for you to handle. The final wave then, wave number three, is a little bit annoying. We've got two battleships, a Sleepless Preserver that has remote reps and a Sleepless Defender that can web you. We also have two cruisers which are Awakened Defenders, standard DPS uh, cruisers. We can largely ignore those. I like to keep my traversal up nice and quickly, spiral in on the Sleepless Preserver because that remote rep is just annoying. Nothing worse than trying to shoot down a battleship whilst another battleship is remote repping it. So get that one down first. The Sleepless Preserver must die first, get within 5,000 uh, 5, meters in orbiting and it won't be hitting you anymore. The other one still might, so don't switch your tank off, just be aware of that. Um, after the first Sleepless Preserver goes down and those remote reps are off the field, that's when you move on to the second battleship, the Sleepless Defender. The webs are annoying, but they shouldn't get you killed anytime soon. I didn't have to overheat on any of these. I rarely even had to use the Assault Damage Control. It can be useful when you're trying to get your traversal up against two battleships early on. Um, it can stop you taking a few big hits, but ultimately that's not too much of a problem. 
With the sleepless, sleepless Defender dead, it's just two Awakened Defender Cruisers that are no threat to you whatsoever. Just kill those and finish off the site. Finally then, we have the Aruz Construct, probably my least favourite of the four different C3 sites when using the Munin. Not because it's particularly difficult, it's not. It's just the fact that enemies tend to spawn at opposite ends of a very large arena, and the Munin has short range compared to some of the other uh, cruisers that I've been showcasing for this kind of content. Therefore, there's a lot of back and forth and waiting to get into range of targets, which just isn't fun. It takes forever, it feels like, to run an Aruz. That said, if it's the only site available to you, absolutely this can run it, and it is going to get you some isk, so you may as well, right? The first wave has two sentry guns. These are wakeful sentry turrets. They have pretty high alpha damage and pretty poor tracking, so if you can get your traversal up nice and quickly, you're going to have pretty much handled those. We also have four Awakened Upholders, everyone's favourite cruiser, annoying webs, annoying utes, and there's four of the gits. They like to orbit at 30 kilometres, so you do need good range on your weapons. Let's remember why we have that whole thing of making sure we can hit out to over 30 kilometres. We're going to kill three out of those four Awakened Upholders straight off the bat, because A, they're annoying, but B, they're the trigger, so you can't kill all four. Kill all four, and you're going to spawn wave two whilst you still have the two turrets on the battlefield, that is dangerous. So kind of get in, get your traversal up against the turrets, drop your MTU, and start to go after those Awakened Up holders. They will orbit at 30Ks, which is just annoying as all hell. You'll find that sometimes they pull back a little bit, which means that your missiles happen to, you know, not have the range to hit them. It's awkward, it's annoying, and this is why I hate the Aruz. Not because it's difficult, just because it's frustrating. Now, there is also a possibility that you might get an Awakened Preserver in this first wave. Doesn't always spawn. It's a cruiser that has remote reps. It's not as dangerous as the Awakened Upholders are. Um, their webs and their newts are going to really screw with you if you leave them too long, so we do need to get rid of those Awakened Upholders. Once the third Awakened Upholder's down, go for the Awakened Preserver if it's in the site you're running. As you can see here in the footage, it's not here in this particular site. Then go after the two Argon before coming back for that last Awakened Upholder. Essentially, don't stress the remote rep that much. You'll find that you can still pull down the Awakened Upholder nice and quickly and not worry too much about it. Once the two turrets are down and you've taken out the last Awakened Upholder, you'll spawn wave number two. Wave number two is a bit of an awkward one. You have one battleship in the form of a Sleepless Defender. This has waves, uh, webs. It's also the trigger for wave three, so we're going to orbit it. We're going to get nice and close to it and orbit it close so that it stops shooting us, or rather at least stops hitting us. It'll still be shooting, it'll just be missing. Um, and then we have four frigates, Emergent Defenders, all armed with webs. This is a horrible wave for your drones. I actually don't even bother usually using my drones because you have to recall and send and recall and send and recall and send because they absolutely hate your drones and four webs means any when they do yellow box your drones they tend to take one of them out before it gets back to your hold so i don't bother with drones basically get your traversal up orbit in close on that sleepless defender battleship and then take out the four frigates first once the four frigates are down we then go after the sleepless defender and trigger into wave three Wave 3, also a bit of an awkward one, not too bad. We've got a Sleepless Upholder battleship, which is a neutralizing battleship, and two Awakened Preserver cruisers. Again, these are the remote repping ones. This can be really annoying, just because the remote reps are remarkably strong for cruiser level hulls. Therefore, we're not going to bother shooting the battleship, because what is the point of shooting a battleship while there are two cruisers trying to repair it? Instead, we're going to orbit the battleship as close as possible. Again, spiral inwards, use the assault damage control if necessary. I never had to overheat on this site either. Um, just use the assault damage control carefully to make sure that it's, you know, you're know you using it when you think you might be taking a hit because your traversal is not quite as good as you'd like it to be. Get the orbit up around that sleepless upholder. Don't worry about the fact that it's neutralizing you. You should still be capacitor stable at this point. Um, it's only 10 gigajoules per second it's hitting you with, and we've got better stability than that. 
then pop those two awakened preservers as quickly as possible. I sometimes find that I do actually have to overheat on killing the first one of those. Um, if you're using rage, this is absolutely the time to use those rage torpedo, uh, rage uh, heavy assault missiles. Take out that one of those cruisers as quickly as possible because it is going to be remote repped by the other one and it can be surprisingly strong. So just make sure you're hitting those with everything you have. Once you've got one of those down, the site is pretty much done at that point. You shoot the second Awakened Preserver, take it out before finishing off the battleship because you just don't want preservers around whilst you're trying to shoot a battleship. Simple as that. And that's the site done. And there you have it. All four of the C3 combat anomalies run in one Munin. Now, of course, I know some of you are going to be looking at this going, oh, well, this could be better or that could be better. And absolutely, the, the aim of this fit was to be able to run all four of the combat sites without having to ever refit. If you're going after just one site, you may decide to refit. Ultimately, the Munin I didn't have much trouble with. The only issue I ever had was with the range. And because Awakened, uh, awakened Upholders are so prevalent in some of these sites, you kind of have to make sure you've got that 30 kilometer range with the uh, heavy assault missiles, those javelins, um, readily and available for you. You might decide you want to fit two tracking, uh, two guidance computers there with range scripts just to make that a little bit easier for you, but you might decide not to. It's entirely up to you, and I'd love to hear what kind of fits you do come up with for running one specific site at a time, but remember, this is designed for running all four sites without having to refit. Love to hear what you guys think, though. Drop a comment in the comment section down below. Below. Otherwise, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing, good luck with the Munin, and see you all in New Eden.